All right, hey, welcome to another edition of JTJU, where we all try to be just a little better at the game of Clash of Clans. I got a tool screencast for you. goes along with the write-up we did on our site, uh, talking about a forecast tool we just put together to basically model how wars might play out in terms of by attack, by town hall level, how many attacks you would use at that from that town hall level, and how many would be used to hit down was the big thing that we were trying to model. But it also, as you do that, you can then also get a very accurate model of the potential score that each team is tracking to. Because when you do it, you can not only model yourself, but model the enemy and kind of know how hard, if you're behind, that you got to push for more stars at the different levels, and if you're ahead, you know, be more conservative. So it, it really helped the, the thinking. And it didn't take long to run a model. You know, we did it multiple times in the, the war that just finished today. Uh, I think I, I took about three minutes of time that I did it. But it really helped each time, you know, as we kept asking, well, should we hit down now? Should we do this? And, you know, we'd, we'd re-key the numbers and look, and then we'd make decisions and feel good about it, and it worked out really good. So let's take a look first at the tool that we're talking about, and I'll walk you through it. This is it. It's made up of two tabs. One's called Forecast, which is the pretty one, but actually you start on the Raw Data tab. And the reason why they're separated into Forecast and Raw Data is that the way you enter the data, which is by your stuff and their stuff, is different than the way you want to analyze it. Because you analyze it in terms of, you know, our defense versus their offense and their defense versus our offense, right? So it kind of jumbles the data together when you're analyzing. But for Keen, we go on this page. So when you go into key, you'll be in the war map. So you'll, you know, bring up your war map. If I toggle over here, I'd be like, all right, let's check out the war map. And you'd be in your own war map, and you'd be counting. This is our current war, so it's not really accurate for that. Let me pull up the. Here we go. We won, hooray! But here's the here's the war, right? So this is their attacks on us. And you'd be going through the war map and saying, for us, first off, your first time through, you only do this one time, you would key the ranges. So see how base is 1 to 6, or Town Hall 10? You key that because as you go back, you know how it's hard to tell what level a Town Hall is after it gets blown up. So it helps have this here so you can count easier. But you're going to go through each Town Hall level and say, okay, 1 to 6, how many attacks are left and count? None are left. Everybody attack. Good. So I would be updating this to zero, but we'll leave it. We'll pretend it was three, or it's two. And then you'd also be counting how many of my bases are still holding zero stars. And it'd be one, two, two of them, but we'll pretend it's three. And how many are one star? You'd be like, oh, it was just dig, so it's one, bang. And then how many are two star? Two, three, three actually, but in this case we'll pretend it's two. Whatever, we can key those numbers, but I don't want to mess with the model right now. We'll just go with it. And so you would keep going down all the way down the page. ding a ding a ding a ding uh, All the way till you're done. And then you would repeat the process. Oh, by the way, key the score in before you start. But then you would repeat the process for the enemy's page, right? And you can do the sound effects as you go. So once you're done with that keying of data, you're ready to go into the next step, which is actually the analysis. And so you'll sit, you'll come into this page. And the only thing that you're keen on this page are these yellow and everything in this thing. It's all about the yellow. So if you're if it's yellow, it means key data. Otherwise, leave it alone. Um, so you're keen in attacks used at a town hall level that you're forecasting, and for that attacks used, your forecast, how many new stars are generated. So what you're looking at, or what I'd be looking at, is I'd be like, all right, town hall ten, they, our defense. So I'm modeling in effect their attacks on us now, projecting it out through the war. And I'm saying they have three attacks left at Town Hall 10. There are four bases totally open. Logic tells me they're going to have to hit those. So I'm going to say they're going to use all three attacks to get those four bases. And really that leaves them nothing else left. And I'm going to say that they're not that great of attackers. They're pretty good. So I'll, actually, I'll, I'll say they're pretty good. So they're going to get two stars in each. So three times two is six new stars. And we move on. Now, you then go to Tunnel 9, repeat the process. Again, saying I got tax used. You're going to look at how many bases are open of each type. And you, But the one of the questions you're asking that I didn't even hit on as I hit Tunnel 10 was, 
whether or not it's okay, like at Town Hall 10, to leave a one-starred base, right? And that's going to be one of those art, more art than science questions, where you look at how the enemy's doing and how you're doing, and do you feel like, you know, do you need to push for two-star and everything? Or can you, can you be more conservative, and if you get a one-star, move on and start hitting down and getting higher odd attacks from a Town Hall 10 hitting a Town Hall 9? Uh, and one thing that you can use at the end when you're done validating is compare the score. And if what forecasts your score, if it shows you falling short, you were too conservative and you probably need to go back and force more attacks in the Town Hall level to try to get better stars. Right? But anyway, you would come into Town Hall 9, right? Let's say we're past Town Hall 10, and, and you look at it as like, all right, there's one base whiffed, one base has got one star on it, four bases has got two stars on it. I got two attacks left. So like we're way into the war, maybe two hours remain or something. So two attacks are left. And I would assume I'm going to for sure do this one. And we'll go ahead and use this one too. Now, an interesting question. Let's pretend if I came back up, we'll go actually go to the raw data. We'll, we'll behave and do it correctly. So let's say that they had four attacks. Right? So now it's four. And see, and we'll, but we'll still actually make it, so let's make it five. Five. So they had five attacks, right? And they have these four bases. And let's say in our war we're like, you know what? I think that they really are just trying to get to one star or better. And so they're only really going to try to close these out. They'll use the four attacks of the five. And I think they'll get, uh, let's say they get seven stars out of it. But the thing I wanted to show you was that there's, a, there's an attack left, which becomes a hit down. And the reason why this is important to think of that different in the model is that hit downs have a way better chance, especially at Town Hall 9, of three starring bases. And at Town Hall 8. You know, those max Town Hall 8 bases that your Town Hall 8 struggle with, go wipe, and the hog bases that are pretty well set up, your Town Hall 9's hitting down will just totally wipe those with like Lava Loonian. Or, or Lalunian, you know. Or Loonian. Any flavor of Loonian. <laughs> <laughs> but the hit down is what you want to first model. So I would be like, well, how are they going to use the hit down? They'd probably hit this zero, this whiffed base with three stars remaining on it. It has zero stars on it. Three stars are available new. So I'd use one of the one of the hit downs for that, or the only hit down. And then I have two attacks left. I'm like, well, am I going to use those attacks for the one star and the four stars, the four two stars? No, probably just going to use one of the attacks left that's in the Town Hall 9 class for that one star. I'll bring it up to two Maybe I'll get lucky and get the third star. So I'm going to model that I take this guy and the hit down being high odds. I'm going to get three out of that. And I'm going to assume that I'm at least going to get two out of this guy. So I'm going to model four stars using two attacks. Right? Now notice how the hit down here is now one because I had two. I used one hit down for this and one attack from the main set for the one star. It leaves me one. I pull down. Now I have a hit down at Town Hall 8. So again, you first model the hit down. You're like, what am I going to do with that guy? Oh, well, we really with Town Hall 8, we want to roll for, we're going to take everything. That's why this guy's actually calculated, because we're just going to use all the attacks. Because usually Town Hall 7 cleans itself up pretty well. No, there's usually very, never really issues. So we're going to say, like, well, I'm going to use them all. I don't care till they're closed. And that means that, and you'll see here I've made it actually a formula. So it's just going to pull the stars at risk. So this calculates, of, if you key those numbers, how many stars are actually out there to be gotten. And so we're just going to say we're going to get them all. Because I have enough. I have seven attacks plus one hit down. That hit down will get that guy. And seven attacks on eight bases. Well, maybe I wouldn't get it back because there's nine open bases. I would not get them. So here, let's change the model. So there are nine open bases with ten total stars out there. I'm going to use all eight of my attacks. I'm not going to get all the stars. It's not possible. Right? I'm going to leave one base open, and I bet you I'm going to miss one of them, so I'm going to go eight. Right. So of the ten, I'm going to get eight stars. And see now, this is being added up. So the forecasted new stars is this totaled up right here. Not that whole column, just these right here. That's here, and then the current book stars comes from the other page, adding up to their forecasted number of 105. And then you could do the same thing on yours, right? Bang, 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 bang down gives you a number, and you're like, okay, we're we're ahead by doing this hit down strategy that we have we can and forecasting them this is getting us into win position so let's be conservative or 
let's say like, wow, if I did this model and, you know, I don't know, let's say I totally felt like their bases were so awesome that we weren't going to get any stars, right? So we're trailing. And I'd be like, oh, well, we can't have a forecast that shows us losing. So I would be more aggressive, less hit downs. So I would say two attacks here and, you know, start pushing the hit downs up, up the channel. And then what that then correlates into is you can, one, maybe share this out to your group. You know, maybe print as a PDF and share it on a website so they can see the comments. Put it in chat. Maybe don't even share it. I'll just comment, hey, the model's at 103 to 105 or whatever it was. It's 107 to 105 us, so we're going to conserve, do these things. Um, however you want to communicate the data that you're seeing. But then uh, and then you can just move on. The other, the only other nuance that's in this thing, and there's some notes that are kind of giving you a rough idea of how to use it. But this is something we do in our clan, this tunnel line free-for-all thing, means that you can ignore Clash Caller when it's above 200%. So more than there are more than two times the amount of attacks and bases. We say ignore Clash Caller until so that goes on and off as this changes. But you can also see how this models into uh, Clash Caller itself. So here's that for that war. You can see as we call hit downs, we put these holds in place. So basically if I said that in the model that we needed two hit downs we would pick bases in clash caller and put holds on them uh like this like we did here and once we did the hold and the like mark is not actually a town hall nine hitting a town hall eight so that what there was a hold there that we deleted but anyway that's how the three pieces can kind of work together but the big thing that i wanted to show you was this forecast tool in the notes of the YouTube video or on the site, if you go to the article, there's a link where you can download the Excel file and then change the formulas to however you want to do it. If you don't want to, you know, sum this up or you want to key it differently, or you want to make it even more innate, feel free. But otherwise, I hope it helps. And uh, as always, good luck with your wars. Don't touch that, Larry. Touch it, Larry. You know you want to. Larry, don't touch Larry, that. Larry, do it. Do it, Larry. Larry. Yes! And so Larry joined the ranks of JTJU, and his life was never the same. What'd I just say, Larry? Good job, Larry.